نصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد Yesterday we spoke about general dua and general supplications and how a supplication is two things. One is attaining your need from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and at the same time, despite it being something personal, it's still ibadah in the Allah. So you're still rewarded for worship. Even though maybe I ask my Rabb for something only for me that's very specific. But because I'm asking Allah, Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal rewards me as if it's ibadah, worship. Even though it's personal. One dimension of dua which is very, very significant and very, very important is and it's based on a hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that generally we make dua for ourselves but we should develop a habit of making dua for others. We should make a habit of making dua for others. And the reason behind that is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Allah has these angels and what they do is when a person makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for somebody else then the angels say ameen and they say may Allah grant you the same so when you make a dua for somebody else it's as if you are making a dua for yourself it's as if you are making a dua for yourself and this, uh, and this, it should be honest du'a. We should really have concern and affection and, and mercy for other people. Make du'a for friends that you know. Make du'a for people that aren't, don't even have Islam. Make du'a for their guidance. Make du'a for the ummah. And make that, it sh- our du'a should not only be sort of selfish, if you want to call it as such, but extend that du'as to others. Remember when the Amir of Tabliq in this country as an office, Patel Sab Rahimahullah passed away, I gave a lecture and I said that it was Jummah and I explained in Jummah that I didn't have a personal relationship with Abhi Sab. I, I met him once personally where I sat and spoke to him once and it was when I was initially pursuing studies. And so I went to Dewsbury Marcus to get admission and I was taken to Hafizab and we sought permission but he said the condition is, is that you and my father wasn't there my uncle you both have to go for 40 days first before we give you admission and my uncle wasn't ready to go so I ended up somewhere else but that was my only personal uh, dialogue with Hafizab but 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 subhanallah why was he missed or why is he missed by even myself? It's because every day in tahajjud he would make dua for every single person of the woman who would cry his eyes out. He would spend hours on the musalla for my guidance even though I didn't know him. And your guidance even though you didn't know him. Every single day. That it should, we, should, we should extend when we make dua to Allah, remember other people. And again, it is something that benefits us anyways. Because our dua is whether Allah listens to it, inshallah Allah listens to it. We have hope, we have tremendous hope in Allah. But the angel makes dua for us to Allah. When we make that dua that Allah grant this person health, Allah grant this person prosperity, Allah give him jannah, if you make dua for someone else's jannah, then whether Allah accepts my dua for my own jannah, when I make it for the other person, the, uh, the angel says, Allah give you jannah as well. So the angel is making dua for us. That is tremendous. It's not as if we're pleading Allah anymore. This is coming from the angel asking Allah to give you that particular thing. So making dua in, innately, it's so beneficial. There are so many extensions. And this is, what we, this is one of the things that I've tried to drive home. In all of the different facets of ibadat, 
there are so many dimensions and extensions of benefits. It's not just one benefit that Allah gives. Allah gives you so much, so much. Like I said yesterday, du'a, even though it may be just for my own self, just for my, let's say I'm suffering some sort of illness and I'm desperate now and I turn to Allah and I make du'a for a cure for that illness. It's, it's about me. I'm only as but still Allah rewards me as if it's ibadah. How true, how, how kind Allah is. Allah could have said, fine, that my response to your du'a is that you get your shifa done. But no, not only does he answer your du'a, you get the reward of ibadah itself. Even though it's my own personal plea, I'm, it's as if I'm worshipping Allah. So all of these facets that we've spoken about, salat and salam, and how I said that you do salat and salam, and you send salutations, your father's name is taken in the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you're doing Birrul Walidain. By sending salutations, you're doing Birrul Walidain. Allah. <coughs> Look at the extension, the, the benefits of doing one ibad, how far it goes. How far it goes. Reading Quran, Allahu Akbar, it's the, 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 the benefit of that recitation and how far it goes for us. Making dua for somebody else <coughs> and an angel makes dua for us in return. So these moments of ibadat, as, as we see them in a very simplistic way, the way Allah treats them in terms of reward is very complex. Allah gives so much back in return. And this is from the fadl of Allah, from the grace of Allah, that Allah's, the way that He deals with us, the way that He treats us, is not on an eye for an eye, for to use that as, an, as, as a sort of benchmark. Allah doesn't say, you give me one, I give you one in return. No. Nah. Allah Akbar. Allah is not like that. You know. Imagine you go to, uh, you're looking for a job, and you find an employer who says that if you work one hour, I give you ten hours pay. You work one hour, I give you ten hours pay. Everybody would leave the job that they're in and apply. <coughs> <coughs> Allah says, "Man jaa bil hasana, farahu ashru amthaliha." This is the basic re- uh, equation of Allah. This is the bare minimum that you do a good deed. Whoever comes with one hasana, my rahmah and mercy directed to this ummah is such it's automatically multiplied ten times. Any good deed of yours. Any sadaqah, one pound, is equivalent to ten pounds in Allah. Multiply ten times immediately. And then, depending on your sincerity, depending on your khushu, depending on how you're giving that, that then ten is multiplied hundreds of times, hundreds of times. إِلَىٰ سَبْعِ مِئَةِ And one reward until 700 times. For one day, you go to Allah, Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal, with a life of 60 years, and you're capable. Allah has given us the ability to present ourselves with thousands of years of ibadah, even though you only lived for 60. Even though you only lived for 60 years. If you simply take Laylatul Qadr into the equation and for 10 years you achieve Laylatul Qadr, 83 times 10 is? Just for 10 years, if those 10 years you attain Laylatul Qadr every year, you have worshipped Allah for (coughs) over 830 years. That's not even a number that's possible to live to. <laughs> so even possible. We struggle with people to reach a hundred. Now that's ten years. Imagine you get Laylatul Qadr for fifty years of your life. For sixty years of your life. How much Allah is giving? How much Allah is giving? How much Allah is giving? So Allah doesn't treat us eye for an eye. Allah doesn't give back in dribs and drabs. Oh, Allah says, you do a little bit, I will shower my mercy on you. 
I will shower you with my mercy. I won't just drop you and drop put droplets of mercy on you. No, I will shower you and drench you in that mercy. I will envelop you in it. And this is the case with all ibadat of Allah. The salat is fard. It's fard. It's not an option. We don't have an option. You can't say to Allah, Allah, I was busy, I was tired, I didn't feel like reading. It's, no, it's a fard, it's an obligation. But you come to the masjid and you perform it, you're performing an obligation. 25 to 27 times the reward is increased for an obligation. Something that you don't have an option for. Who? Show me a person in the world who is as generous as that. Who gives in this nature for something that you're compelled to do. Fasting is fard. Fard. It's an obligation. But you fast for the month of Ramadan and you stand for the month of Ramadan. غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِن Allahu Akbar. This is an obligation. Understand this. It's not something that Allah is saying, do optional and because you're doing it voluntarily, I'll give you this reward. This is something I command you to do. Kutiba alaykum siyam. No option. Illa, whatever Allah has exempt, exempted. But if you fit the criteria of someone who's able to fast, no exemption. What's the reward? Whatever sins you've done in the past, Allah will forgive. For an obligation. Allah could have said, I'm going to give you nothing. <laughs> you have to fast, I'm telling you, to fast. I'm going to give you nothing for that. More than, more than right to do that. Allah has every right to do that. To say that as my servants, I command you to do this. You're not going to get anything, but show your dedication to me. Prove to me that you will obey me. Allah says, no. You fast, غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ So every facet of worship, you can take whatever you want. Fasting, charity, hajj, every type of worship, be it voluntary, be it obligatory, Allah showers you with barakat and mercy because of it. <coughs> you won't find any worship of Allah, any worship of Allah, where well, Allah doesn't give back more than what you give to Allah. Not a single worship. <coughs> that even things that are we consider part and parcel of life, that if you have a family, you, you need to provide for them. If you have a family, you have to be... Uh, amicable with them and be nice towards them all of these things which are normal <laughs> and expected you do it and there's a reward <coughs> so it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we, we use these examples to see the generosity at, 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 at sort of play and how willing Allah is to give how willing you know sometimes our, our perspective of things become so twisted. We think that Allah, na'udhu billah, na'udhu billah. People think that Allah is unfair. Look at this aspect of Allah. How is Allah unfair? When Allah gives like this? When Allah gives in this type of manner? If anything, the unfairness is that we're receiving so much from Allah that we don't deserve. That's the reality. We're attaining more than what we should be getting from the grace and the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So dua, going back to where we started from, make dua and make it a habit to ask Allah for others and ask for good for them. Ask for their good because the good will then return to you. And not simple that they will make a dua. No, because you've made a dua for somebody, the angel will make that dua for you. You ask for somebody's guidance, 
the angel will ask for your guidance. You ask for somebody's Jannah, the angel will then ask Allah for your Jannah. You ask the angel for Shifa, uh, the, you, you pray for somebody else's Shifa, the angel will pray for your Shifa. So make it a habit to ask for other people. It's almost as if you're getting uh, a free pass at having the Malaika supplicate for you. Allah give me the tawfiq. Allah grant all of you the tawfiq, the ability to understand that. And after understanding, put it into practice, inshallah. Again, we don't know whether tomorrow's Eid or not. Inshallah, it's not. And we celebrate Eid on Wednesday with one more day of Ramadan. But if it is tomorrow, then whatever we've gone over in these few days, Allah accept it from us, inshallah. And above all, Allah give us the tawfiq to do amal upon it, inshallah. جزاكم الله خيرا سبحان الله بحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك